Picking up where we left off, we'll move to the measures of a probability distribution. So when you see that word measures, uh, they're talking about things like uh, the mean, median, mode, those sort of things like numbers um, that we could calculate that give us useful information about a data set. Um, here for the measures of a discrete random variable, since this is uh, just the nature of the way we study it, we really just uh, we focus on the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. And you notice we've got new formulas for those. So let me just jump right into the formula for the mean, uh, and you can see that even here. Um, that's how we'll begin number two. Uh, the mean can now be calculated with this formula. And so uh, you see mu equals that capital sigma and inside some brackets x times the probability of x. Okay, so we're, and when we get into the example, we're really going to talk through how that formula works. Um, some you know familiar things we're looking at there, but also you know also feels unfamiliar. Uh, maybe one thing we can mention is why do you think we use a mu here? Um, in chapter two, when we calculated a mean, uh, we saw two different symbols, right? We saw x bar, and we saw mu. And if you remember what those represented, the x bar was a sample mean, and mu was a population mean. When it comes to discrete random variables, it's always going to be a population. So we use only the population notation. Why would it only be a population? Why, why wouldn't we be considering samples? Kind of look back to the previous examples. All right, so we started with uh, the World Series data. And you think, okay, so the number of games played, that is what X represented, the 4, 5, 6, or 7. Those are all the only possibilities for the number of games they play. Well, for just that reason, it's a population. That's all of the possibilities. We're not taking a sample of the possibilities. Four, five, six, and seven, that's everything. That's all of the data right there. So it's a population uh, that you're looking at. The same thing in practice number one, right? When you're tossing a coin. Well, we counted every single way those three coins could could turn out, right? We, we didn't take a sample. that We saw everything. We saw the whole population. So uh, we get the population uh, notation language uh, when it comes to these new formulas. Okay, so the variance, uh, you see a new formula there. Um, and, you know, some, some things look familiar, right? It's little sigma squared to represent variance. Makes sense. Um, you see x minus mu squared. That looks familiar from the old variance formula. Um, but then you're multiplying by the probability of x. And okay, so we see it. We'll use it in a second. No need to go on about it now. And finally, you see the standard deviation. Um, and really, what is that? It's just the square root of the variance. So it's that same connection that we saw in chapter two. Once you know the variance, take the square root of that number, and you got your standard deviation. Okay. Let's take a look at practice number two. It says, consider that World Series data. And, well, we're going to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation using our new formulas. Okay. So, in part A, what is the mean? So, I've just copied the formula there. Um, how is this going to play out? So, we are going to look at each x value one at a time and multiply each x value by its probability. And the sigma in front, if you recall, is telling us to add those. OK, so we get this fancy notation. And this can be just that notation. You know, that can be intimidating, and that can, can throw people off. Um, but here's what it's saying. Take every x value, multiply by the probability of that x value, do that for all of them, and then this is telling us to add those. So here's what it would be. I'll just show you what we've got. And uh, you might scroll back um, a little bit to the first page to look at that World Series data, where these came from. So we've got mu equals, and OK, the first x value is the 4. Remember, the x's are the 4, 5, 6, and 7. So we take the 4, and then we multiply by the probability of 4, which was already done for us there. It's 0.2. 
then we're going to add and we'll take the next x value 5 multiply by its probability 0.175 and we keep going add the 6 times the probability of 6 was 0.225 and finally, plus 7 times the probability of 7, which was 0.4. If we multiply those and add them all up, and I would recommend just do that in one shot in your calculator, get to your final answer. It is this right here. Mu will equal 5.825. And if you're wondering what that number even means, 5.825 what? Whoa. Okay, I got the number. Maybe I got it right. But what is that even? It's the number of games. So the units here are the same as the units on X. X represented the number of games, either 4, 5, 6, or 7. So that tells us uh, the average or the mean number of games played over those 40 years. And you can see, you know, it makes sense, right? It's it's almost up to six. That seems like that's that's probably the average, right? When you think about how many times each one was played, um, seven games being by far the most. Okay, maybe while we're looking at this, we'll try and make sense, you know, just really quickly uh, of this new formula. Why is this new formula for the mean what it is? Because, you know, if you're like me. Up until now, you've always thought of a mean or an average as I need to add up all of the numbers and then divide it by how many numbers there are. Never thought of it as connecting to a, a probability, <laughs> right? Okay, so let me explain. So if you go to that, if you're looking at that World Series data still, here's here's what it would be like. Okay, so what if we were to do it the old the old-fashioned way, if you will? We certainly could. Right? How many times were four games played? You say eight times. So you would take four and add it eight times. That's five, six, seven, that's eight right there. Right. So you'd be adding four eight times. Then you would keep going and you would say, okay, then I need to add five seven times. Okay, I won't write this all out. You get the idea. And you would add 6 9 times, and you would add 7 16 times. So you'd have this huge list. You think, well, how many numbers were there there? Well, there were 40. So you would add all those up and divide by 40, and you would get the same answer. But we've got a much, much quicker way of doing this. Okay, let me break it down. So this was 8, right? 8 number 4s. Can't we just say 4 times 8? Do we really have to add 4 8 times? 4 times 8. Okay. And then we could say, how many times did 5 occur? All right, 7 times, right? 5 times 7. And then 6 occurred 9 times, and then 7 occurred 16 times. And we would divide this by the 40, right? 8, 7, 9, 6 gives the 40. We don't see the formula yet, but we're really close. We could divide each of these terms individually by the 40. So we could say this is 4 times 8 over 40 plus 5 times 7 over 40 plus 6 times 9. If you're wondering, like, do you need to remember this? No, you don't have to remember what I'm doing. Here. I'm just trying to make sense of the formula for you. And there you go, right? So, you know, 8 over 40, that's the point 2. So we got 4 times point 2, 5 times 7 over 40, 6 times 9 over 40, 7 times 16 over 40. That's exactly what we see here. It's just a different angle of how to calculate it using probabilities and way, 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 way faster. Okay. If that made sense, then I think that's awesome. If you're still kind of struggling with this, okay, at the end of the day, you just need to be able to calculate this stuff. Um, although I want the deeper meaning to to land for you, of course, at the end of the day, you just gotta you just gotta know how to compute these numbers. Okay, let's move on to the variance part B. Uh, so we'll use the variance formula, and hopefully, yeah, I copied it there. Okay. So once we have mu, right now we can find the variance because mu appears here. Okay, how is this going to work? So we're going to take each x value. We're going to subtract 
the mean. We're going to square that. And then we're going to multiply by its probability of that x value. We're going to do that for each x value, and then we're going to add them all together. So I don't recommend necessarily you writing them out the long way here. Um, because I think it would get too long. You certainly could, but I think it would just get too long. Um, here's a better way. I'll just show you everything that I've got. So what I did, maybe I'll just show you the first one. Okay, so I said, okay, the first x value is 4 for the World Series data. Minus the mean we just calculated. Okay, then we square that. Then we multiply by the probability that goes with the x value that we just used. So again, that's the point two for the probability of four here. And I just go, went ahead and did that calculation and rounded to three decimal places. I got 0.666. Okay. Then we're going to move on to the next x value, do the same thing. Subtract the mean, square that after you subtract, then multiply by the probability that goes with five. And I got 0.119. I encourage you, double check my numbers here. You never know. And it's just good practice for you. Okay, then we'll move on to 6. Subtract the mean, square it, multiply it by the probability that goes with 6. I got 0 0.007. And finally, you can use 7, x equals 7, subtract, square, the probability that goes with 7. I got 0 0.552. And then all you got to do is add all these up. That's what that sigma in the front is telling you. Once you have these, add them all together, and that is your variance. Added together, we're going to say sigma squared equals 1.344. And that is our answer here. And if you're wondering what the units are, I didn't write them. It's actually the same. It's still games. 1.344 games. Remember, uh, variance is describing the spread of the data. How spread out? How spread out are they? And we really haven't gotten into the nitty gritty. But okay, we got the number. Finally, part C for this example. Uh, the standard deviation. Hey, we just take our answer. 1.344. Take the square root, and that's going to be just little sigma. I got 1.159 when I rounded to three places. And there you go. Okay. Uh, let's stop this video right here.